Hey, y'all, I'm going to be reacting to Love of Kill episode one. I'll be watching it off of Crunchyroll's website, and I'll be starting my reaction in three, two, one, and go. Oh, yeah, I'm pumped up for this. Okay, I'm already liking the track playing right now. Sounds pretty damn nice. Oh, okay. So that's going to have some intense moments. That, oh. I got him, even though you can tell there was a bit of censoring there with, like, the dark shade. It ain't as bad as how other anime censor things. Um, I'm going to assume that this lady is probably proficient at hand-to-hand -hand combat. If she doesn't have any bullets. Yo, I like the Lensler effect on her gun. It looks so beautiful. Oh! Yo, I'm surprised she actually missed the dude's head. <laughs> but then, oh... Oh! Well, then again, I'm assuming the speed must have started a little, though. And my guess is he's going to leave her alive on a whim, going by how she's on the key vision on Crunchyroll's website. That's going to be my guess. My guess is she got into this line of war. With the way she reacted, I wouldn't be surprised if she has a background of maybe her parents passing away or being killed or something. Because Ethan... I mean, she might as well. She's not in a position to negotiate at all. And he wouldn't... <laughs> oh, man. I wonder, what... I wonder what this dude did to get a bouncy on his head, though. And unfortunately for her, she doesn't have any room to negotiate. Past and future. Crime and punishment. I actually, okay, I love the writing style. It is some pretty looking cursive there. For some reason, the guy with the brown hair kind of reminds me a little bit of a, of how I would imagine a mature version of uh, Guitar would look like from the Get Giga No Guitaro series. I don't know why I get those vibes. Oh, man, she looks like an adorable. She looks as if she's terrified of the man that beat her up. As if she's looking around to see if the dude's around. I don't know, that's the vibe I get in the opening. I gotta admit, even though there's not a lot of animation going on, I like the colors that they utilize in the opening. At least gives it a little bit more unique. Oh. Yeah, I wonder if she's going to potentially fall in love with the male protag eventually. Because it seems like that might actually be a possibility. What the fuck? How did that get that the blood? <laughs> oh, man, you know what? I really love how this series is over the top. It's been a while since I've seen a series like this that just says fuck physics and f and fuck normal conventional logic. Oh, okay, I'm, okay, so it definitely does look like she has a rough backstory. Yeah, this dude be kicking everyone's ass. Holy. I'm assuming them pointing the guns at each other are going to probably... It's going to be probably more symbolic in nature than them actually ended up in this. Or who knows? They might actually be in that situation where they're in like a standoff. I call bullshit on that. Considering her line of work, I highly doubt someone like her would run out of battery on her phone.
Whoa! Talk about even below the belt there. Figuratively, of course. Oh. I'm actually shocked he never did. But then again, again, seeing how she looks reserved, shouts out probably when it doesn't seem like the time to be sharing her own personal details. That's my guess. Hmm. Ah. You know, that's actually pretty realistic that a big company is trying to get in on the action. I'm assuming it's the man that beat her up. Oh, uh, yep. Just by all the flirt, flirty nature of the text. There, it really couldn't be anyone else. And Chateau doesn't seem like the easily approachable lady type either. <laughs> oh, man. I just love how he's such a fucking jab that he already did all the beatdowns before she even showed up. How many times is this fucker going to death? Holy shit! That's some dedication right there. I don't know if I should be amazed or a little scared for her. Or maybe even both. What a fucking show off. I'm assuming he's showing off his capabilities. Mmm. My guess was though is that something's gonna force her to not be able to stay in line because usually if it's a first episode like this, the status quo in a series is usually destroyed almost instantaneously. Mmm. At least now we have a name to put behind the man at the very least, because I've been curious about what he was called. Okay, talk about max efficiency there. And that explains why Chattel struggled to deal with them in the first bit of the episode. I mean, the manners will take advantage of it, although I'm assuming the lady wouldn't be able to do it so easily. I'm not seeing what this hesitation here. The thing is, though, wouldn't all the missions they take be dangerous, though? I mean, I guess this problem is more dangerous than others, but still, though. If you don't take some risk, you're not going to be able to get ahead in life. Yeah, but I'm The thing is, though, I'm assuming Chateau knew exactly what she was eyeing up for, though. And my guess is other op job opportunities for her aren't exactly interesting her because she would have taken those options if that were the case. Because Chateau does seem someone that's really capable. <laughs> oh, man. 
this motherfucker. I love him now. He's fucking hilarious already. I like how she's not even contributing to the conversation a single bit. Which is understandable. I mean, in her line of work, I don't think she'd have much opportunity to hesitate. They do say looks can be deceiving, though. I mean, Ryang probably legitimately does feel an attraction towards her. I don't think so, because if that were the case, he wouldn't try to spend time with someone that he'd be mocking. Whoa! <laughs> I like this, though, how he's no nonsense, too. <laughs> oh... And what does Move do to actually playing it off like that so damn perfectly? Her eyes. <laughs> you can tell she'd be disgusted at the possibility. But it ain't like she can say no, though. Only because. Who knows what type of information he has on Chateau? He could easily threaten her. Well, at least the people around her and herself. And he's got a lot of resources too that he can utilize. So it ain't like she's got much options. Whoa. <laughs> what? Oh. I just love how he does it all matter of fact, dude. What a fucking Chad. Yeah, for her, best be, she, she best be saying that she has no more time on the clock for her own good. The less she associates with something like Ryang, the better. That dude crazy the fuck out because he has no mouth. I'm like, he doesn't look human. At least the facial real. Oh, hello, um, user with the think the grease lettering. Hope you're having a great day right now. Damn, I mean, make it sound like it's fucking torture. You know the kid is right. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna do Christmas, at least have some sweets or meat or something. I mean, she sh at least she showed up though. <laughs> I'm gonna love the chemistry between these two. Or you should have said the lack of chemistry. It leads to a lot of nice natural humor. Ah, uh, man. Even, like, he looks like he's scheming 
in almost every single scene, but when he has his eyes closed, he especially looks like a master schemer. Considering her line, yeah, considering her line of work, she seems like the type that isn't into luxuries, especially with the way she's dressed, too. Because people would normally dress a little bit more extravagantly during holidays like Christmas, Christmas Eve. <laughs> I like how that, I like that bit of characterization when there are things that actually do embarrass her. That's actually kind of cute. And it goes along too. But what they showed off in the opening where it seemed like she had something in her past that absolutely wrecked her because my guess is she was a normal little girl until something traumatic happened in her past that made her into, I wouldn't say the cold water woman that she is, but... Sort of like the, um, I should say, the no-nonsense lady that she is. And I love it. And I love this fucking dude. Talks with absolutely cer certainty, too, like. Even though she could have easily not come to the day. I fucking love stuff like this. Like, his confidence really makes him a really engaging character to watch. <laughs> oh, man. I love, too, how the animators do a great job of, like, animating the body language. And also her, her feet, too. Actually slowing down. I'm assuming he's doing that because he's pretty confident about his self-defense skills. That's going to be my guess. Whoa. I thought he'd wait a little bit longer before trying to shoot a shot into the hoop. <laughs> oh, man. The thing is, though, this whole situation resembling a day is mission impossible from the get-go. I'm assuming he's holding up his end of the bargain. Yeah, it has to be. He must have sent her some kind of information regarding her target. Because I don't think much of anything could have gotten a reaction like that. I don't... But the mess she has to... I mean, I could see her reasons why she's really confident. He might want company. He might want to settle down. <laughs> Bullshit! Like, that's the only thing. <laughs> he could say that all he wants, but it's way more than just that. Oh, sup, Spiral Matt? Yeah, it's got to be more than just wanting to help her, Spiral Matt. I mean, come on. Was considering Ryang's backstory and how important he is, he definitely seems like the type that might want to settle down, build a relationship. So when he said, oh, yeah, I want to help you, I'm like, nah, bullshit. It's more than that. Yeah, or you know what? It's more of mixing a lie with the truth. Yeah, he may want to help her, but it's more than just that, though, if we're being honest. And that's what I like him. I like about him. He's, a, he's considering the circumstances, he's pretty. Uh, he's a pretty realistic character. Which makes him extra lovable. That's true, Spiral Matt. Never trust him. I remember in Bleach, the moment I saw Gein before he was revealed as a bad guy, I was like, yeah, I don't trust this fucker. Or and even in, say, other series, too, where you have characters with their eyes closed, I'm like, yeah, 
They're always vicious. Well, almost always vicious. I'm sure he can afford another hotel easily, though. I mean, the dude's got the money. I like the way draw eyes are drawn there. With the way he's saying it, though, he's put us in it like a, like as if he was expecting this end result, though. Oh! <laughs> oh, was that maybe, I was not expecting the bear hug surprise. Oh, shit. How bold. Okay. Could be a love at first sight thing for all we know. He probably hasn't completely noticed it yet. Oh, this dude. I can't wait to see more of him. I know, Spiral Man. That look he made. I mean, the look that she made made it look like she wanted to rip him apart. Okay, it makes me wonder how old he is if it was 17 years ago. I mean, then again, he could probably be like 24, 25. Oh. Yeah, when it comes to this series, Palma, I'm going to probably start to go. Oh, oh Chateau. I'm going to send some of the fucked up happened to her family. Yo, I don't trust him either, Spell Matt. It's going around right before she says her name. That's my gut feeling. Ah, yep, I knew it. Usually when you have a big revelation like that, usually an episode ends. Because it makes for a perfect teaser in most cases. I'm assuming this is young Riang. Yeah, it has to be. The idiot looks kind of cute. I ain't gonna lie. I dig it. Seems like he was abused as a kid, though, because he has bandages on his feet and hands, though. And even the house looks super dirty, too. It doesn't look well kept. Oh. Definitely implying that he met her when she was younger. At least going off of the ED. All right, but the ED is actually um, saying a lot, actually. Oh, man, it kind of makes me wonder how Ryan got injured, though. Although, again, my guess is going to probably be he had abusive parents because I don't think those injuries would be coming out of nowhere, at least... Those are my impressions on it. And that also explains why he mentioned the whole thing about other people smelling bad to him. It actually puts things into perspective now, if he does have that kind of backstory. I gotta admit, the drawings in this CD are pretty cute, though. Oh, yeah. Gotta admit, the PV looks pretty nice. Going by this, I'm assuming that her trying to protect the lady didn't bear fruits, considering how banged up Chapsa looks. But overall, I gotta say, the preview does look exciting because, for one, in her being injured, as much as I love our pro tag, her being injured in that situation, at the very least, prevents her from feeling like a potential Mary Sue, considering that it looks like there's gonna be struggle for her to protect her target so in a way gotta say the preview looks are really really positive if you ask me from a story's perspective but anyways on to my thoughts on the episode i gotta say i liked it if i had to rate this episode on a scale of one to ten with one being abysmal five being average ten being exceptional 
I'll give it a six out of ten for above average because for one, I like its premise with our girl Chatel being roped into doing things with Ray Yang in order to get the information that she needs because it leads to a lot of humorous set pieces and it has potential to lead to a lot of cool action set pieces as shown off in the preview where it looks like it's action packed. That's why I liked it from a script standpoint, because for the most part, the jokes work, but when there's a throwdown, it looks a damn good. So I'd say the first episode, for multiple reasons, is falling off of all cylinders. I'd say also from a sound standpoint, the episode sounded good. I liked the voice cast. thought the voice acting was great. And from a character standpoint, I actually really dug it. I love Chatao. She's definitely... Um, a bare bones lady where she doesn't ask for more than she needs. She's the her necessities type of girl. While with Rayong, you can tell he's extremely excessive, wanting hotels and shit and things like that when he's trying to go on a date with Chato. So things like that really give off bits of the personalities, making our both of our leads more interesting. Thought the animation quality looked good. I like the lens flare effects that they had here and there in the episode. And I'd say overall, that's why I thought the episode was above average, and I'm definitely racking the episode too. But anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts and how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comment section below. Hope y'all rate the video, share it, comment, or subscribe. Thank you very much, Spiral Matt, for commenting on the live chat. And thank you all, everyone else, for watching my video. Hope y'all read it, share it, comment, subscribe if y'all want to, and I'll see y'all later if you come back for more. But anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great, safe, and fantastic day, everyone. Bye-bye.